Well, we got another big gnarly oak up on the sawmill. I thought this would be a good one to do a video on. Got a lot of interesting grain compression in all these limbs where they've broken off and healed up over the years. I don't know if you can see this, but this grain just swirls everywhere, all of these little limb areas. Here you can see some of it on the other side of the tree. It's going to be real interesting when we cut into it and see how much of that swirl goes into the grain. I believe this is a white oak. I've had it for probably six or eight months and it was down for about two months. It had died. You can see here, got a little rot going on here. But we'll clip all this off, see how far it goes. Customers wanting two inch slabs and a couple of one buys. Here's some other swirly grain that you can see there. I can't wait to cut into this, see what it looks like. But I gotta take some of these points off just to get it where to go through the sawmill. So I'm gonna lob that one off and then come down and get this little burl down here. See how interesting that is? This was down towards the base of the tree. It's really had a lot of stress over the years on this. So it's gonna be interesting to see. I'm gonna cut that upper one off and then I'm gonna come back. I gotta cut that rotten section off with the chainsaw. Then I'm gonna turn the tree a little bit and try and save as much of this burl as I can. We'll see what it looks like. You can see I've got the laser there raising the saw head up to where I think it's going to make the best cut on this first limb and I'm going to trim off. I have to be real careful with it, uh, getting everything set up. You want to make sure you're not going to hit something down the line there because you just can't see around it that well. It took a little bit to cut these points off, but I think it's going to give him a little something to work with. He's kind of a crafty person uh, so he's going to use all these off cuts to make other things as he sees he can get something out of them or whatever and I thought that some of these especially the ones that's got some of the rod in them you'll see another one a little bit later coming up it just looked like it'd make a nice little end table or something so we'll see what it looks like when he we get them cut off maybe what he can do with them. Some of it looks pretty good. That's a nice one there. I've seen people take uh, deer heads and mount on something like that and then set it on a desk or whatever. Uh, turns out pretty good. Little things like that, you wouldn't think about it. The old guy that did it, I'll try and find a picture at some point and post that on one of my videos. It, really turned out good. I rotated the log around so I'm going to clip this little burl area off. I just didn't have to turn it much to get it where I could get the most of it off there. Uh, this is pretty interesting. I think this is one that's going to really, I don't know, it just looks to me like a small end table. Once I get it cut off, I'll show you what it looks like. Maybe take some epoxy, use the filler type epoxy and then the finish coating really make something nice out of it. I believe this is the one. We'll see what it looks like here. Yeah, it's real interesting there. It's like you can just clean it up and then put the filler epoxy in there and really make something nice out of it instead of just wasting it. Good looking stuff, I thought. I got to turn the log again to get this next one off. I got one or two left on there and I'll get them off and then start slicing the log up. I didn't set the pith on it. I just kept it kind of level just right where I'm cutting so that I could just take off as little as I needed. And that one just looks like it could be a bowl to me. Just clean the edges up. Maybe set it on another board or something and then carve the rest of it out and make a bowl out of it. Yeah, it's all, half the work's already done. <laughs> so now I'm turning a little bit more to get this last couple off there and I'll be able to start slicing it. 
get these out of the way. I had hung on to this log for quite a while. It's just, you never know what somebody's going to need. But a gentleman called me about this, doing a circular stairway. Uh, I was, it was questionable about how much rot was going to be in this, and it turns out to be a fair amount. But he was able to work with what I've had. I did have to cut him, I think, one more slab to finish out what he was doing, but overall it's turned out pretty good. It's good looking wood anyway, even with as much rod as there is in it. I'll make these couple of cuts here and take off a small section. And I believe I'll be able to cut them first slab. It it won't it'll be a rough slab across the face, but it'll start getting me down to where I, I want to get into that crotch figure down below there see what it looks like I'm kind of anxious to see what's going on inside I just hate it there was so much rod on this log but I think he'll be able to work with it and what he's doing he'll be able to move his step treads around and cut out what's good out of the slabs anyway This will be a little piece of a slab, but I think it's something that he can make something out of somewhere down the line, I guess. Yeah, we got the first side off. Thought I'd show you what it looks like on the inside. Real pretty grain. A lot of swirls, a lot of changes in the grain. Gonna really get interesting as we get closer to the crotch figure. That's kind of where I'm working my way down to. Got a little bit of rot here and there, but I think overall it's gonna be in pretty good shape. Got a little bit hard right here. I may have to put another blade on. I think so, yeah. I'm getting a little bit too much chatter. I'm gonna change the blade out. Roll him over and keep a cut. And you notice here on the end of the log towards the operator side, now that I've got it, rolled over you see that other big limb so there's actually uh, three limbs that came out at this point so that's why I've cut it so that hopefully we can go through the center of all three of those it was a little bit off with that center one you can see how it's high but I kind of leveled out those two bigger ones on the left and right side of the log see there I was looking back to make sure my dust collection system was on because I was getting a lot of fine sawdust blowing back at me there. The dust collection system worked real good and you have those issues like when bark or little pieces of limbs, whatever, clog up the exit point on the saw mill. So you have to keep an eye for that. When it gets clogged up you get a lot of blow by there. Uh, other than that, uh, this dust collection system worked really good. I had to keep it all pushed back outside. I have several customers that come pick up a good bit of it time to time. But here you can see I'm starting to slab things. Um, using that uh, pattern mode on the AccuSet is real handy. You don't hear a lot of people talk about it. I've talked about it a couple of times. It just takes a lot of the guesswork out and keeps you from having any waste that you don't need at the top or the bottom you know if you get the waste on the top obviously you can just move it right out here you can see i uh, had cut i think four inches now i'm coming back and splitting that down the center because i wasn't sure where it was going to hit um, some of that rot that's there on the other side at the far side but after looking at it, uh, I thought it was going to be okay. Okay, so I've gotten two slabs so far, but the customer is needing a 14 inch, one by 14 for a skirt board for his uh, stairway leading up to some circular steps is what he's doing. So he's going to be cutting out. I recommended cutting a pattern. He's got a circular stairway 
that he's going to be cutting these step treads out of. So he's going to be able to cut a pattern and lay on these two bys to get what he needs out of them. They're only like, I think he said 32 inches long and they go from eight to 12 inches. So what I'm planning to do is you can see that I've got this big knot here in this rotten area. And then I've got this other big knot down here. So I don't wanna get him his one buys off of this side because that's gonna put those big knots in the face. So what I've planned to do is come around, I'm gonna flip it up, put this side up, cause it's a little bit straighter. I won't have to take near as much off, but there's not as many knots. There's a big one down at the other end and there'll, there'll be some in it, there's no doubt. This one will probably show through. But I'm gonna cut him two, I'm gonna uh, square this face off. I'll have to set the pith again. It's gonna be crucial to get good boards off this side to set that pith because it's so tapered on the other side. But he's only needing uh, eight feet, I think is what he said. I've got it written down, but you've got this one or two knots it's gonna be within two feet this log is uh, 10 feet 10 inches so it's almost 11 feet so he's got plenty to cut off i'm just hoping to get away from some of this i'll just have to see how this goes but i think i've got enough room in here to get him two one buys that's what i'm hoping for so i'm gonna pitch this side up set the pith and, and square it off and see now here you'll see, <clears throat> I'm going to use that clamp dog and the chain turner together and try and flip that far side straight up. So I'm using that chain and the hydraulic lift underneath to kind of finagle this thing to get it up. To keep from, I'm trying to keep them scar in the wood and get it straight up where I can cut that top face off. That chain turner, man, that thing, it, it is the dog with this sawmill. Being able to turn forwards and backwards, it just makes it so much easier once you get used to it. But it will tear a log up, or your good wood, if you're not careful with it. But it really comes in handy. I guess I could have set my camera up a little bit better. Here you're looking at the back of my old noggin I checked the pith on the log just to see but it's going to work out better on this to just come up to the top and adjust it so that I get the most level cut up there and um, then I'll come back obviously flip it over clean that other side up and then just start slicing its slabs I've got it situated there and then come on up. Here you can see where the laser line is hit. So I'm going to go down to this side. You can see it running through here. So I'm trying to get the most that I can. And you can see. I don't know if you can see. Right there is the laser line. So it's cutting down pretty good bit right here. So I'm probably going to raise it up a little bit see how it does we'll look down here on this side right there right here is the line so there's still a good bit left on the log so I'm gonna raise up just a little bit take a different look at it I brought it up about three-quarters of an inch but you see this right side there I don't want to come up too much because of the wane that's going to be in it there but I left this at 15 inches so I know that I can come back and uh, edge out a half on each side or full inch whatever it takes on one side so I've got a little bit of play in there and the one by sixes I know I've got uh, three inches of play with those once I go to edge them out but I'll get this one out of the way there's still some good wood left in it. You can see now 
I'm cutting the first one by after making that initial cut. I'll come back, catch another one, pull those off, and I'll be ready to roll it over one more time and clean up that other side, and the rest of it will be slab. So it'll just be a matter of slicing it up at that point. I hate that it had so much rot in it, but at least his situation is that he can position his step treads to get around those rotten areas. And he can kind of pick and choose the grain in the slabs too for each step. Kind of work with it in that regard. Well, let's see what this thing looks like. Well, this is what we got for one buys. I had to come back and edge these off. He needs a one by 14 and two one by sixes for skirt boards. Extra trim that he's got to deal with. This is some beautiful stuff, man. I knew it would be. You know, we got knots in this, but I think it's going to be okay. It's Everything he's doing is uh, rustic, but I was just trying to get him the best cut that I could and not get at those big knots involved in it. So let's flip it over and get the other side. You know, I was just talking in the earlier part of the video how this chain turner can tear up your finished wood. Uh, you'll see here in a second, I get a little bit carried away and I gouge it out a little bit. Uh, I should have done it a little bit different. You'll see that here in a minute. I'll use both of them together the clamp dog and the chain turn. You'll see I'm raising that up there to help hold it. I should just drop that clamp dog down and go under instead of backed out and that nicked it. And I'm coming up too high right here. I should have pushed in a little bit more with that clamp dog. You see what I'm doing there is to rock it off, but that tore it a little bit. You see those tears on the side. I try to keep from doing that. I know better. I just didn't do any better. But anyway, it all worked out all right. I use these roller toe, toe boards a lot in moving the cants, even my finished wood. After I get done with these slabs, you'll see that I'll raise those roller toe boards up and then lower the front one. And that makes that, I keep them oiled up good with, I use diesel fuel on those, it really works good. But that allows the stack to roll back towards the operator side more so that I can just use that clamp dog to lift up the whole stack of finish boards and swing the far end out so that I can grab it with the skid steer at that point. You'll see that coming up later in the video. Uh, here I'm cutting a, this top section off. There's a good bit of wood left in there, but I'm just going to give this to the customer so he can make his little craft things with it. He wanted all these little bits and pieces, so... It'll be something he can use, cut that one knot out, maybe do something with it for something else. Now I've got it where I want it, where I can just come back and just cut the slabs out. He'll have good straight edges to work with for uh, cutting out his step treads. So he's just kind of blow and go at this point. And you'll see I'll use that uh, pattern cut again to get that two inches out so I won't have any waste with it. And I think that's where it wound up right there that quarter inch over so but I'm gonna let that slide and uh, he can just hold that one out if it's uh, not quite thick enough for him or whatever instead of wasting anything else but you'll see that the rest of the slabs that we wind up with that pattern cut takes care of all that. It really comes in handy. Got a little bit of wane on this one. Some gal that's those gouge marks there that just passed by that I did with the chain turner. Well I was saying you gotta be careful with that thing. It really bites in good on the bark, but it'll bite in just as well on the face of your wood, so you have to be careful with it. So now it's just a matter of slicing and dicing with this thing. So I won't whiz through it get these out of the way I think I wound up with about an hour and 25 minutes and cutting this big old tree up um, not too bad considering what I had all I had to do with it getting the bits and pieces out scratching my head in a couple of these different 
cuts that I had to make, but that's just what it takes sometimes. But I can't say enough about how good the AccuSet is on these machines. It's, once you get used to it, and that pattern cut, I didn't use it a lot to begin with. Man, I got, where now, I just use it all the time. Um, and I set it up for different things. I'm cutting six and three quarters by ten and three quarters on my cabin logs. Well, I'll set it up on that. I'm cutting some of these big 32 inch logs so I can get three of my six and three quarters out of them or whatever and then get the rest in two buys. It sure does make it easier on me. I don't have to do all the adding, subtracting, and taking out for the blade. Uh, I'm just get it down to where I'm, I know I've got enough left in it. And here you can see I've got my engine percentage meter at 45. I like to keep it on these wide oaks like this around 35. It just makes a better cut. And if, if you're not using that percentage meter, you're really missing something on your sawmill. That's a handy little tool to use no matter what you're cutting. You know, you get used to it, but you know, no matter what type of wood and how wide it is, that load percentage meter is telling you where you're at. So if you know you keep it in a safe operating uh, number, you're going to get the best cut you can get. Now you will have to slow down on some of these big boards and hard oaks like this, but you're going to get the best cut. And then when you see you're up against a knot or something, I'll slow down. I'll drop it down to 28 or 30 to get through these knot areas. And it just makes a big difference, especially on cutting slabs for finish work for people. Here you see I've run out of throat on the sawmill, so I'm having to take one slab off so I'll have enough room to finish cutting all the way down. I think I like one more, and that's going to finish this up. I'll have to come back and edge out my one bys get that out of the way and I'll be done with it. I'm sure you've noticed in a couple of places I've sped the video up so this whole video wouldn't take so long for you to have to sit through. But I wound up with a little over an hour and a half I think in getting this whole thing sliced up so I didn't think it was too bad for the situation at hand there. And here you'll see what I was talking about, raising those backstops up. And I'm going to unclamp and raise my roller to toe boards up and allow that whole bundle to move back towards the operator side just by jiggling it a little bit. And what that does, once I set it down, if I raise with that clamp dog, I can spin it that far side out. Now I can just grab it with the skid steer, take the whole bundle outside. I don't have to struggle with moving anything it's all ready to go out so now it's precious as time to grab and go she doesn't mind do you? she'll do whatever you ask her to do I'm getting these one bys off lay them on the side where I can come back and edge them out you see those rough edges on them I've got that one slab up there it's got pretty bad end on it so I'll have to finagle it and get it out of there I'm going to just take the give those to the customer as they are I think one of them bust as I was putting it in the stack the finished stack uh, but he probably will still be able to get I think two or three step treads out of that but I just didn't want to take a chance and trying to edge it out because of that bad rot that's in it. So now I'm going to grab this whole stack of finished slabs and get them outside just do a little bit of edging I've got left over and that'll be it for it. I tell you that stump grapple really comes in handy that, having that flat attachment up on the end. You have to be careful with the teeth underneath and don't bring that uh, clamp down too fast because it, it hinges so it might uh, you can see there it flipped up a little bit. I think I'll get a better bite on it before I go out. You see it roll back down. That board there, that's one that busted right there, that bottom one on it. Uh, it was a 
split right down the center of that uh, rotted area. I hate that I probably lost one or two step treads in that when that happened. I couldn't see it under there, but after I got it out and took a look at it, I could tell what was going on with it. Here I'm gonna bring my one buys back up, get them edged out. I'll have to do them one at a time since they're different widths. Finish goods. Uh, get them edged out and that'll be it for it. That's all I lack. More precious, just make short work out of everything. That way I don't have to handle individual pieces. You don't call in sick or complain about much. You know, I have to baby her from time to time, check the oil and the fuel filters. Other than that, she's handier in a hip pocket. Get all this cleaned up, get everything edged out, and I'll be done with this. This is the last piece to edge out. I think it's the two one by sixes. At, uh, he's needing for trim pieces. Get it out of the way. I'll have her done. Well, this is what we wound up with. Got eight slabs and a couple of those two on the right there. I really didn't count them in, but he's going to get probably four or five. He needed 15 step treads. He'll get a few out of that. But uh, the main thing was getting those others edged good, so I left those just live edges on them. Here you can see I've got most of my foundation block in. <clears throat> I've left off on this end where I can go in and out with the skid steer for backfilling. Got my most of my plumbing drains in, so I'll be calling for an inspection this week. I wanted to get it backfilled up back to these drain pipes. You can see where I've started using that big pile of rocks that I had and I'm capping off with Crusher Run. So I can grade that off fine. I've got my line sets for, I'm doing the three zone mini split for the heat and air system. Got them running under, the, I'm gonna bubble wrap the bottoms there where it turns and comes up the concrete. But I've got them in a, a metal trough there and I'm back filling around it with the aggregate. Then I'll cap over it with a little bit more, get it up to the right level. But I've just been backfilling where I could. But I'm going to have to probably go on and finish out. I've got the uh, drain there for the vanity sink. And the drain there for the kitchen sink. And it'll run all the way across back over here to the kitchen. But if I go on and put it in, I can't finish my backfilling. So I think I'm going to go on and put these pipes in. Call, get the inspection done. Then just come in and cut them. Do my backfill work and I'll backfill all around this drain pipe with the crusher run concrete that I'm using. I just wanted to show you where we're at. Wound up with about 38 hours in all this block work so far. I'm no block mason, but it's all turned out pretty good. Little bobbles here and there, but that's all right. Leaving this open in really helped for all the backfilling, but I am gonna come back. I can still come around the edge all the way around and I'm gonna do the um, crusher run up against the block. One rock over there fell against the block, but I'm just gonna cap off with this crusher run so I can get my electrical in. Just wanted to show you. So until next video, you guys take care and be safe. See you next time.